Today, we will integrate Bird Dog PTC cameras with Skyhoy PTC controllers. And with our new Blue Pill platform, this is really straightforward. But the new take on this is that we have a Bird Dog optimized configuration ready for you. Furthermore, we will also show you three newer Bird Dog cameras, namely the P120, P400, and the P240 cameras. And finally, Skyhoy Style will demonstrate how easy integration is with other types of hardware. And in this case, we'll bring in Tally from a switcher system. Today our controller of choice is the PTC Extreme, and PTC Extreme is our flagship PTC controller. It has a Hall Effect joystick up here, it has a zoom rocker here, it has a focus wheel here, and an iris knob. Those are all dedicated functions. There's also space for hand wrist over here and so on, so the ergonomics is really taken into account as well. It's also flexible, so you can map any type of camera onto these. And generally speaking, we have configurations where you have a camera selector on the lower row. Then you have a uh, row of buttons for preset recall. That's mostly for PTC cameras, right? And then we have menu buttons up here that allows you to change between different uh, menus for each of the cameras. And then there are like auxiliary functions, like uh, we can actually turn tally on and off over here, but that's mostly for demonstration. We can see we are connected. And we have a shift key here that sometimes give us access to additional features. On the camera selector, we have clear labeling. So it's easy for me to see that this is the Berg Dog P120. This is the, the P240 and this is the P400 camera. But I can actually change those labels inside the system. And we'll be looking at how easy it is to set up new cameras or rearrange them and uh, choose different um, settings for the cameras uh, to make sure that the controller works exactly as it should. Also, with relation to the switcher system that you're probably connected to, that could be vMix, ATEM, TriCaster, etc. There's a lot of switcher systems that can be integrated for the tally information, which is that little LED on top of your PTC camera that you want to light up at the right moment. So these are some of the things we'll cover in this video. We'll now take a look at Reactor, which is the software that runs inside the PTC Extreme. And yes, it is actually running from the PTC Extreme. None of what we're doing today requires internet access. It can all be done offline. If you need a software upgrade, you need access to the internet. But to make all the configurations we do, you just need network access from a web browser to Reactor inside the PTC Extreme, running on the Blue Pill platform. So this device has Blue Pill inside, and Blue Pill is our new platform that is um, substituting, in many cases, the Unisketch platform that we have had for a decade. But the cool thing is that Blue Pill gives us modularity as one of the key selling points. That means Unisketch panels can be attached to these for various purposes. If you have a switching controller, if you have an auxiliary panel for preset recall, you can add that into the reactor environment. Secondly, it's so easy to set up new cameras and mix and match branch. So you can add uh, Panasonic cameras with your Bird Dog cameras, although they are vastly different and runs different protocols and so on. That was difficult and Unisketch is so easy on this one. And today we'll also look at how a custom configuration for Bird Dog can give you even more than the standard Visca configuration can. So much of that will be unveiled. And then it's also possible to have a ton of cameras because the Blue Pill platform really doesn't have limitations. You can have pages and pages and pages of cameras here for instant access and control. This is Reactor. What you're looking at right here is Reactor set up with three Bird Dog cameras. And if you wonder, is it easy to find cameras on the network? I can tell you, yes, it is actually pretty easy. So over here in the Devices tab on Reactor's home screen, you can add a device. If you do so, you are basically faced by default by a list of devices found on your network. So here you can see we have a ton of different things that we could add in to Reactor right here. That is uh, video hubs and ATEM switches, etc. But there will also be some PTC cameras. There's an ADAC camera here, but you also find the three Bird Dog cameras as of today. Now, there are some PTC cameras, especially Visca cameras, which are not discoverable over um, the network. And thus, you can always go to the manual tab. And here you can search up anything. Let's say that you actually had a Panasonic camera. Um, 
Uh, and then you'll find different models of these here. It could also be a Canon camera. They make awesome PTC cameras as well. And you'll find the CRN series here. And then of course, if you wanted to just exclusively see what bird dog models we support then, you can also find them here. Now, today we have these three on the network and this is why they pop up here in the device discovery tab. I don't need to add them a second time, but Trust me, it would just be a matter of picking those, select, and then they will pop up here, say connected, and they will automatically have uh, figured out what is the IP address of the camera. So that's all, all happening by automation. Now, for the end of this video, you'll also see the ATEM switcher down here. We'll use that for tally information, but to put cameras in over here, then typically the workflow would be that you press the add button and then you would do the same as what you saw before. You have either device discovery, you can add them manually, or in this case, you could actually add them from the existing collection of devices you have. So let's say that I wanted to add a fourth camera again, and that would be adding the P240 uh, uh, camera here. Now I have it twice on my camera selector and you see, hey, it's already popped up down here in the bottom. So if I select, Camera two and camera four, they're gonna be the same. Camera three is a different one and so on. So um, would that make sense? Well, actually it could sometimes because what if you have a ton of cameras, like above 10 cameras, and you want on the second page to have one of the cameras from the first page a second time? You could actually add a camera multiple times on the camera selector and then always have it on the first button. That would be one application of having this. Now, um, it's just to show you how easy it would be to add new cameras. And there are additional things that you now want to select, which is why you would open the camera selector, press the blue button, open the camera selector, and this is where you configure your camera, okay? So configuration in this case means that you need to know its device ID. This is something that happens automatically with the plus button, but just to let you know, when we add additional cameras, um, uh, bird dog cameras, which is um, in this case added over here, they have ID numbers starting from one, two, three, etc. This is automatically numbered as you add devices. So probably you don't mess with it, but you could actually change a device ID to 100 or 300 if you wanted to. But the, the important thing is that you know they all have numbers and they are just sequentially numbered. So we have device number one, two, three, and then two once again. So this is why we have this one twice, right? Then we have the name. Name, I want to change the name. So let's just go and um, I think we could call this BD120 instead and uh, BD240. And you could, of course, name them by something else like front camera, like uh, overview, uh, whatever you wanted. Uh, and bird dog P400. So now you see we have uh, actual larger uh, letters because there's space enough in the displays to show them in a larger font. And those labels are so easy to name in here. And then um, there's a ton of things like we can also add the color. So let's just quickly select some funky colors for this. So I will have a yellow one and two blue ones. And those colors are now also hitting the buttons down here. We have seen how easy it is to change the label of the cameras in the camera selector. Also, how easy it is to apply a different color than the default white color. And that's all happening in the camera selector right here. But one of the important things in this video is to look at the configuration chosen. You see in the drop downs called camera config, there are a specific config for bird dog cameras selected. It's called Visca Bird Dog. And I want to change that for one of these cameras over to Visca All Stars, which is the general Visca configuration that we normally use. And if I do that, you'll find that as I choose P400, the menu options is really, really limited. You see that we have only four pages with up to eight different settings that we can set on each page. But if I go to the Bird Dog 120 or 240, you see that we have five, six, seven pages of options. So that's the difference between whether we are running on the Bird Dog, uh, Visca Bird Dog configuration or the Visca All Stars configuration. So I'll just set this back to Visca Bird Dog and we will explore a little bit what is inside. Now, just a side note, we are talking about mixing and matching. It's not given that all your PTC cameras are Bird Dog cameras. You may even have cameras which are not PTC cameras, but put on a PTC head. The way you can combine all of that in our universe is simply by selecting the right configuration right here. And of course, adding the device in the right side tab of the home screen. 
But as you do so, that configuration knows how to work with your Canon camera, your Panasonic camera, or even your Ari camera if you had that on a pan tilt head. So that's just to kind of broaden your scope beyond bird dog cameras and let you know that this is a generic PDC controller that will work with a ton of different brands and equally well. So the bird dog configuration, which is the main takeaway for today, is the one that has these seven pages. So let's look at that. And generally, if you don't know what a PDC controller is, I'm sorry, I forgot to introduce that. We basically choose a camera, like now the P120 over here. I can use the joystick by rotation to zoom in and zoom out. I can also move it to the side, up and down, so I can basically navigate the camera to zoom in, to, to frame the image as I want. So I'm just doing that now for this camera. Then I can change to the P240 camera and then do the same for that one. Now that needs a little bit of adjustment apparently, so we can just get it framed nicely here. Okay, and then I take a P400. Now this would be available on any Visca camera. So let's just do this. I want a different framing, maybe I'll just snap the car here. So if I want to adjust the sensitivity, I can actually do that. I have a, a button here on the home screen which changes the sensitivity so I can be a little more rough with my joystick movement. So now I can really put the joystick in full swing and then we'll see that the, the movement is um, slowed down a little bit here. So I can increase the joystick sensitivity. But this can be helpful if you want to have a slower movement of your camera, like that. All right, so what we see right now is that we have this car out of focus, but I can press the uh, focus one push uh, button here and then it will get into focus immediately. But I also have manual focus turned on and I can use the roller wheel here to adjust focus on the car. So you can see it gets out of focus and then back into focus using this uh, function here. So that's just one example of what is beyond the joystick, namely the zoom rocker. So I can also zoom out on the zoom rocker here. So, like that. And then finally, on PDC controllers, we have presets. So I can press and hold this one to store the preset. I have already stored a preset on preset number one. So if I recall this one, you get this view. And then if I recall this one, I get the view that I just saved. And here is a nice little note for you. And that is, in the bird dog cameras here, you have a, an option to change whether the preset recall is recalling all presets, or all settings, that includes color settings of the camera, or only the pan, tilt, and zoom positions of the camera. And that is true for the Bird Dog uh, P120, uh, the 240, and I think also in here for the uh, 400, but I'm not an expert in that. But anyway, there's, there's actually a point in telling you this because that particular parameter is not available from the controller. You need to set that in the web UI of the camera. But that's just a side note. Uh, whether it's the one or the other thing, we are recalling the presets by the command the cameras understand. And I have done that for the other cameras as well. So if we bring one of the other cameras a little bit out of uh, shape here, then I can recall that first preset that I've made for this camera. And there you see it re-instantiates the uh, pan and tilt and zoom position, including the color uh, information that was available when we recorded that preset. If we move on beyond the home screen where we find white balance mode, red and blue gain, there's gain, iris, focus mode, etc. Those are home screen meaning things that you will also find deeper inside the menus. They are just broken out as quick to access features here on the home screen of the controller. But inside exposure, you get more detailed access to exposure mode, which is currently set to manual. We can change it to shutter priority, brightness, etc., or to full auto. And if it's in full auto, you see a little sign that indicates that I cannot change the iris in that case. So I kind of want to be in the manual mode so that I can really play with the iris of the camera, which I'm doing right here. I can also play with the gain settings. I can change the shutter speed over here and so on on this knob. So these settings are available on the knobs here and that's in the in exposure mode. Then I can move on to color where we see the white balance replicated. It's currently in auto mode, but I can change it to indoor, to outdoor, and you see immediate changes to these. These are um, hooking on to the general Kelvin degrees of uh, indoor and outdoor lighting, but you can also put it into manual mode where you have the ability to change red and blue gain on these two knobs to really shade the camera and match them up with everything else. So now I've left it in a bad state here and I'll just quickly turn it back to auto for our demonstration. 
sometimes there are a number of things that you can't do. And this would be a good example of even the bird dog configuration being slightly generic. There is a common denominator inside of that as well, because you can see on the bird dog P200, uh, P120 camera here, that there is a number of settings that are not available on this camera either. But as soon as I go to the 240 or to the 400, you see these are available. And that would include some of the detail settings here, some of the color settings. And definitely if we go to the matrix settings, you'll find that on the P400 and 240, they are available, but not on the 120. So yeah, there's also limitations within the bird dog universe, but if you really wanted to, it would be possible to make a configuration that would say Visca bird dog 120, and that would only have parameters that is available in the 120 camera. So that's also a possibility. But talking about the advanced features these cameras have for the 240 and for the 400, we have such as the color matrix where we can uh, select uh, the uh, different dimensions of the color matrix uh, in this case, on the, in this menu. So that is one bird dog specific feature that you get on this controller that would otherwise not be available in the generic Visca. So guys, I've covered a little bit how presets work, how pan tilt zoom work. We have a one push focus button here. Uh, we can also navigate zoom iris on this wheel, by the way, which would uh, be just like this iris here, but always available independent of the menu you're in. And then of course the focus knob for your thumb. So I would like to end this video by looking at how we can take in tally information from a switcher system. And you already saw that I have a connection to an ATEM switcher over here, but I have not set it up to to uh, color these buttons, but I can. Uh, and I can also forward that coloring to the camera. So there's basically a number of things that we would like to do in this case. First of all, we want tally information. And what is tally? Tally is if one camera is live, you want it to light up red. If one is ready to go live, that's what we call preview, you want it to light up green on top. And you also want these buttons to light up red and green so the camera operator knows if the camera he is about to adjust is live on air. So that's what we want. But we also want, as we push these buttons, to, for instance, change the auxiliary channel on an ATEM switcher. So we could have a monitor in front of the camera operator that would bring that camera up on the monitor as he chooses this camera, choose this camera, choose this camera, that camera would pop up on the monitor in front of him. And that's what we want to do. And we have made it so easy that you can choose any switcher system with any cameras that you want. So that's what we are going to explore now. But for forwarding tally and for routing triggers, which is what this is called, you need to select what is the system behind because tally would come from a switcher system almost all the time while routing could come from a video router. It doesn't have to be an ATEM, but today it is. So first thing that we'll do is to add tally forwarding here. We would simply go to our device collection that is already added and then select the ATEM constellation 2ME. By the way, ATEM Constellation 2ME is one of the things you want to drive from your blue pill inside controllers because it's a little bit picky. Um, Blackmagic Design has um, decided to put a bug in it that makes it um, really uh, hard on the network and that is not a problem on blue pills. So um, if you have that, reach out to our sales and support team and they'll instruct you how to, to get that solved. But here we can easily use it and add it for both tally forwarding and routing triggers. So we'll now explore that. This is added. Let's see if we go in here, we, uh, we need to ad adjust a number of things. Uh, first of all, we actually need for tally forwarding to choose what is it actually that we are forwarding here. And uh, we have a number of different options. Uh, probably we'll just choose the ME row, which is the, the default right here. So we'll just uh, go with that. And then we need to choose which ME bus it is. So we'll just pick one because we have um, just the, the first ME bus uh, that we want to use. Then we go to routing triggers and the default choice is actually pretty good. It is to, to route to a specific auxiliary channel on the ATEM switcher. Uh, it could also be preview and program. So that actually would make your PDC controller a video switcher if you chose preview or program. But now we'll just choose aux and then we need to select which aux bus it is. And that would also be, oh, well, let's take aux button, bus number two. So this is now being set up. Then inside the camera selector, the way that you will handle uh, or associate each camera with an input would be using the tally index and the routing index. So now we'll just say first camera is input number one, second camera would be input number three, let's say that, and the third camera would be input number two on my ATEM switcher. Now already you see the buttons are changing colors and you're also seeing the cameras here are changing the colors. Let's just turn this bird dog camera around. 
You can see this camera that's rotating towards you right now has a red tally on the top. I have an ATEM switcher right here, and if I press the cut button, you will see these two colors are swapping around, and it's also happening down here. Now you begin to see the point. We are not only instructed here, but this controller is also doing you a favor that you cannot easily get otherwise, namely taking this color information and pushing out to the cameras. That is forwarding tally to the cameras. And we are also enjoying it on the controller itself by lighting these buttons up correctly so that as the operator is selecting the cameras, he can see, oh, this camera is live. So be careful with that one. Now, that was the routing trigger. That was the second thing because on the ATEM switcher, we also want, let's see if we can go up here, looking at outputs. I think on the second output here, this is the one that we want to change to the inputs. And now we want to go into this table and, well, we would basically do the same because it's running on the ATEM switcher, but keep in mind this could be an ADA Kumo video router instead. So that would be then different numbers potentially on that video router. And now this routing index I have set up, we will now see that reflected right here. So we chose number two and as I'm now pressing these buttons, you can see how this little check mark is moving around. In other words, on my monitor in front of me, I would see the camera that I'm adjusting. We're basically done in this video, but just a quick few things here at the end. First of all, I want to show you a really cool thing. If you want to reorder cameras down here, you just drag them around like that and they'll reorder on the panel. So that's a very cool thing to know about. Another one is that in case your operator is away, you can actually access the virtual version of your PDC Extreme or any uh, any controller from, from Skahoy here. So if I press here to just get a full screen view, you can see I'm actually able to grab the joystick and then I can move a camera. Woo. And I can also choose my cameras down here. You see all the displays are reflecting the same things as the physical controller is actually doing. And finally, there is an engineering menu in this product. And if you press and hold the camera button, you get into that menu. So that's your secret pathway to the engineering stuff that engineers want to do. And that is like looking at the system IP or, um, well, you can change the project title. This is more like for information, but you can see there's a sleep timer information so that you can adjust when will the panel dim, when will it go to sleep. You can also change the pan and tilt directions. So that's for some of you guys who have asked about that. There's pan direction, tilt direction, zoom direction, focus direction. This is all invertible on these easy to access buttons in the engineering menu. Display brightness can be adjusted here on these uh, buttons. That will be easily noticeable in uh, a video like this. And that's it, you can exit, you're back to normal. So um, that's also a nice little thing to know about your PTC controller. Thanks for watching this video. I am sure that you guys with bird dog cameras are excited about what you can do with that specific bird dog configuration we have made and to see how this can be integrated with a switcher system like ATEM or VMix or TriCaster, just pick a different configuration. Thanks for watching and follow us on social media, please. If you want to stay updated on Skahoy News, this is the right thing to do. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's a lot of great ways. And also reach out to our sales and support team if you need any help or have some questions. Thanks for watching.